All right, hi guys. So this lecture is going to be a little bit different than um, the other topics in that it's not actually anything to do with this <laughs> module, um, but I could just see that you guys needed this. And unfortunately, the guys that needed it particularly are, are kind of missing from this class, but as you know, it's recorded, so hopefully they'll find it helpful afterwards. Um, but yeah, my aim for this session is basically to give you some, some tips to manage your time um, and basically be productive. So I think like what I don't want to do is, um, I, you know, I don't typically tell you about everything that I do because there's lots of stuff that I do that's not relevant to, to you guys. Um, but just to like, I guess to give some credibility to what I'm about to talk about, I might list some of the things that I've done in the last 12 months. So this is, this is not me bragging, but just like, so that you can maybe believe what I'm about to, to say. So published three papers. So written three papers and published them that involved writing um, pilot study um, and do, you know, having some people come in and use some software and write about that. There is um, um, given three guests let guest um, presentations at um, industry conferences for banking security. Um, we won two research. I've won two research grants um, recently. So one of them is working with a, a bunch of a bunch of people here, but um, leading that bid, working with West Yorkshire Police. That was six hundred forty thousand pounds that brought into the university. And we're working with West Yorkshire Police to improve the way that they do. Um, Handle digital evidence. There's an eighty thousand pound grant working with Birmingham University to develop um, a way of generating random virtual machines, which is based on some stuff that um, system that uh, I sort of like came up with that idea a while ago. But Lewis, who's a previous student, worked on that project as, as his final year project. But we're now getting. Um, some funding to basically improve that. We're actually going to be hiring some students to work on that soon. Um, so if you guys are programmers, then keep an eye out because you'll hear from us soon about that. Um, we've been um, planning the overt system, which is a um, replacement of our current lab infrastructure. So I've been involved quite heavily with the, with the planning of that. Um, I've done two certifications in the last 12 months. Um, not like a huge fan of certifications, but obviously that takes a while. Um, the <clears throat> worked on a various soft um, software, like programming projects. So what you see in front of you now, I created the software that basically converts my slides into this HTML stuff and all the formatting and CSS and everything behind that. It's built on top of a framework, but that was something else I did over summer. Um, I've brought in guest lectures. I've done a little bit to help the society. Um, done external curriculum review for Avatar University. Um, the anyway, I don't, I, my my aim is not to <clears throat> brag, but what I'm saying is you can get you. It is possible to get a lot of a lot of stuff done. Um, but it, it requires you to make use of your time. We all have the same amount of time in our lives. Like um, you've all got the same amount of hours in your days, depending on how much you sleep, I guess. But you, you know, you, the, the solution is not to sleep less really. Like, I mean, maybe a tiny bit less, but you need to be able to sleep, but it's how you make use of your time <clears throat> so that you're effectively doing stuff and not spending a lot of time thinking about stuff that you're not doing basically or worrying about stuff is like the worst thing you can do. If you're just worrying, then you're just wasting time, basically. If you're just running things over your head over and over and over again, then you're just like, that's just time you've wasted. Unless you're actually proactively doing something about those things, then, you know, you're wasting your time. So, unlike every other lecture, which is basically based on um, <clears throat> stuff that is like, recognised by the industry as being relevant to to like 
specific subject matter knowledge. This is a lot more subjective what I'm about to talk about. And I think the, the thing to take away from this is that everything that I talk about is not necessarily going to work for you. And you should just like, like everything in life, listen to what I've got to say. If you, if you think something might work for you, try it out. If not, then just ignore it all and you can figure all this stuff at the end of the session. If you think it's, it was, if it was a waste of time, then I'm sorry for just wasting your time. But, um, you know, hopefully there's some tips and tricks and techniques that you can use that will be helpful to you. So I'm not talking about project management. Um, you guys have learned about that in other modules already. You, you know what a Gantt chart is and I've seen most of your like Gantt charts that you've had to do for your project. I guess my question for you would be, how many of you are actually reflecting on that Gantt chart that you've written? Can I just see a show of hands if you actually are referring back to it while you're working on your project? <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so your Gantt chart has essentially been a waste of time. If none of you are actually looking at your Gantt, so none of you put your hands up. Um, so yeah, Gantt charts, are, especially when you're forced to draw one up, it's like this high level goal of a specific project and for your final year project you've had to do this Gantt chart and hopefully it's been if you know I, I'm not surprised that you haven't looked at your Gantt chart but it will still be in the back of your mind that at least you've thought about a list of things you have to do so it has been helpful um, but maybe Gantt charts are like more helpful when there's a team of people and there's someone managing that team and you can like check that the project as a whole is on task but when you are just managing your own time, a Gantt chart has, I guess, limited uses. Um, so what I want to talk about is your like everyday work patterns and how you use your time and manage your commitments and do it more effectively. And basically, you know, when you agree to send send something to someone or you 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 you've got a friend and you t you borrowed something and tell them you're going to bring it back the next day, like how do you remember that that's what you're going to do? and actually make sure that you follow through with that. So it's larger than just like managing a project, but it's like managing everything that you're up to. So the first thing to, to um, remember is you've got a monkey brain. You, your brain is like evolved from monkeys and evolution has made us very clever and very stupid. So there's a lot of things that we'll just find boring. So tasks where you start doing them, you slow down, you basically, once, once you start to get bored, your mind starts wandering. Um, there'll be some tasks that you find engaging and, and enjoyable and therefore you'll naturally prefer to be doing those things. And some of those things will be like playing computer games or watching movies. And, you know, it's just like, remember, your brain is tasked, is basically, will find some, some things fun and some things not fun. There'll be times when you don't work effectively where you're just tired because it's a late afternoon or you're just, um, you know, you're just bored. Or the, you know, there's various things that will mean that you're not always working effectively. You'll forget things because your brain is not designed to like store lots of information. Like you, you can learn a lot and you can build a lot of knowledge. But what your brain, your brain is not very good at maintaining lists of things. Basically, like your brain's not going to remember your whole Gantt chart, for example. So if you just sat down now and ask you what's the first step in this portion and like you might take a few minutes to like remember each of those things that you have to do so all that stuff is like your brain's not very good at tracking it all think your brain is amazing for like learning things but in terms of like remembering things that you need to do it's it's horrible it's not very good at that um and you know if, if you're you will basically naturally be spending time just running over all the things that you have to do and all the commitments you have to do. And just as I'm talking now, you might, you know, as I say this, you might think, well, what are all the things I need to do today? And all those things that I need to do tomorrow. And what are the events that are happening? So you've got some classes and what do you have to do to prepare for that? Or what do you need to do when you're in those classes? And what do you need, to, you know, are there things that you need to prepare for the next thing? And like just, um, you know, tracking all that takes up your mental space. Because you're, if you're doing all of that in your head, that's like time that you're spending thinking about things, again, without actually doing anything. You're just trying to remember. And how you guys need this lecture. Um, how many of you guys like just basically just run through things trying to remind yourself of the things that you need to do? Does that sound familiar? I mean, yeah. I mean, I think everyone does that. Where you, just have, you just like have to keep saying things to yourself every now and then to remind yourself what you're about to do. You might be walking into uni and go, okay, so what do I need to do? 
and, and like try or you know might not even be anything you're on your way somewhere and you're running over your head all the stuff that you need to remember when you get there well that's a waste of your time because you're basically going to have to do that over and over and over and over and over again and then you're still going to forget half of it so first tip don't try and keep any dates in your head if you still aren't using a calendar then you need to bloody get it get your act together and use a calendar how many of you guys use a digital calendar to track your events in your life all right so there's a couple of you that have like hands that are only half up so what i take from that is that you use oh yeah i've got one but hardly use it so if there's ever a set time where you need to be somewhere it should be in your calendar it's straightforward right like i mean i i um the reason i have put this on a slide is in a lecture last week with the level fives so second year students I think there was like a like one percent of them were actually using calendar and it blew my mind it's like what are you doing like you so what you're trying to remember like your assignment dates in your head like what your assignments should all be in your calendar you what about all the lectures that you need to attend they should be in your calendar if you have a morning lecture like now you guys should have set your alarm so that you like how can I get here on time and not um, not 15 minutes late? So, <laughs> so you know, you use a calendar, use use alarms, you you know, use things that are outside your head to remind you of the stuff that's relevant. Um, so you know, and if you are so inclined, if you're a caveman, you can write on paper. Fine. Nowadays we have digital things and you could there's plenty of like apps and things that you can do so first of all you've probably if you're using a smartphone you've got a calendar on there already um if you're using android you might want to install an app from from play store to get a nice looking calendar that you can put on your um, desktop or launcher or whatever so that you can see an overview of the thing tasks that are upcoming um i guess um what I can say about my own setup is I've got my home screen. I prefer not to have my list of tasks as the first thing I see, but if I swipe in either direction, I can get my list software in one direction. And in the other direction, I've got like daily, like agenda. And then the next like page across on my desktop is like this kind of thing, like a monthly view. So it's like, it's good to basically have that set it up so that you basically have it ready and so that you can use it. And if you don't, if you're not, doing that then do it so you have a monkey brain if you are trying to put up you will generally tend to put up put things up so for example you might get up to a certain point in your project the next thing that's on your list of things to do for your project if you're referring to your gantt chart might be something that's particularly boring or something that you don't actually want to do and therefore you will naturally do other stuff instead so when you sit down if that's the thing that's your one thing you, you might Basically, we're putting off your entire project just because there's one thing that you think is the next thing you need to do um, and you don't want to do it. Well, there's a few things you can do to avoid that, one of which is you shouldn't just have the one thing. There's plenty of stuff you can do for your project, so you should be able to pick and choose what you're working on at any particular time. So the, my, my next tip is the two-minute rule. So if you ever come across something that you can achieve in less than two minutes, so you agree to do something, takes less than two, just do it. Do it at that very specific moment that it's defined. If it's going to take you, and here's a tip for writing emails to me. I know some of you will feel like I take a long time to reply to emails. If you write an email that I can reply to in less than two minutes, you'll get a very fast response, uh, generally speaking. So, um, so if you ask me a yes or no answer, you pro probably get an email back immediately. If you ask me something that involves me logging into something and doing some other stuff, I might need to put that off because I'm working on something else at that time, so I apologize. But two minute rule. If it takes less than two minutes, do it on the spot, the very moment the thing is defined. You have a monkey brain. So you've got all these other commitments on your mind, even though they're not relevant. So, you know, when do you actually naturally remember you need to go and buy a new battery? Is it while you're at the store walking that, you know, doing your shopping? Or is it like while you're actually doing something completely unrelated and it goes, oh, that's right. Oh, I need to remember to do that. And you're just constantly trying to remind yourself of all these things that you need to do at the moments that aren't actually when you need to know that stuff. You're just like constantly 
coming up with all this stuff in your head. So next tip, write lists. Like if you, I can't emphasize this enough, writing things down in a list is, it's, it's just, you just, it's so helpful. So rather than trying to remember all the things, have a shopping list. Like it's not that difficult. If you've got a, um, you know, you could have a list, for example, for each of the projects you're working on, write down, you know, you can use paper if that's what suits you. I, do, I used paper for a long time, um, <laughs> back in back in the day. Um, you know, you could write write on a piece of paper a list of all the stuff you're doing. And I guess like, so again, just like um, relating it to my own personal experience, when I was a um, software engineer, so a programmer, I would um, basically have a list of all the tasks that I'm working on. And the, it was very important to me that at the end of the day, before I went home, I just wrote a lit, made sure it was clear on this piece of paper what I was working on, what point I was at, the next steps and everything on a piece of paper. So the next day when I came in, I could just start working. Because you know, when you come in the next day and you forgot what you're up to, and then it's like, you could just spend a lot of time just thinking and, you know, but if you have like a list that you're working on, you can just get into it a lot more quick. It's quicker, but also it allows you to be able to switch between tasks more as well. So you could, um, you know, you might have a few lists of different sorts of things that you're doing. You go and do something off that list, look at another list. It's also very satisfying to cross things off a list or check things on a list um, because if you, you have that feedback of, um, you know, of what you're doing. Uh, so yeah, tick things off as you do them. Also, your list needs to be actionable. So when you write your list, your list shouldn't be something like um, mum, which means could might, might mean to you like that her, her, your mum's birthday is coming up and you have to go and buy her a present. It needs to be like, what is the next, what is actually a thing that you can do, an action that you will be able to check off the list not like a high level goal. Maybe you want to maintain those somewhere as well, but what is the specific thing that you need to do? So everything needs to be actionable and something you can actually check off the list. Some of you might will be daytime morning people. Some of you nighttime people. If you're a night owl, you know, you know, basically yourself. Um, uh, so for a long time, I've, I've kind of, I'm more of a night owl, I guess, than uh, I'm not a morning person. But you know, the, you might be, you know, your best working hours are in the morning, or your best working hours are in the afternoon. So if you're a morning person, probably your peak work time is like maybe like 9:30 till 11:30 or something. I guess would be like your peak time where you'll be working the most effective. Whereas um, other people like myself will be like most effective in the afternoon. Um, and, but you know, you, there are certain times where you're not going to be able to do certain times of work well. So yeah, just figure yourself out. What, you know, where, when are you actually going to work well and actually design your day around that? If you are um, working, if you work well in the morning, make sure that's where you've got yourself some time scheduled to do work on your project or whatever. And then in your afternoon, you might be your time to, to reply to emails and things. So, you know, where it's less, there's less cognitive load kind of thing. Do the easy stuff at the times where you're less effective. Um, so yeah, there will be some things that are easy to do. Um, so for example, finding the, 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 the photos for this, these slides, I did while I was watching Walking Dead. I could do that. I can do that while, you know, without, you know, needing to think about too much, just like searching the internet, find some Creative Commons licensed images, you know, copy and paste them and bring in the attribution stuff. So, you know, I could do that without, you know, really needing to do, um, spend a lot of thought on it. Um, but, you know, do you work well with deadlines? Do you need deadlines in order to be effective? A lot of people do. You need to set yourself some, especially for a project, like you're finding your project with essentially no deadlines until the end. Especially when you compare that to like this module where there's a deadline every week, there's a, there's like a there's a possibility that if you are a person that works the deadlines, you'll just get stuck on this module and not do the other stuff, which is just as important, if not more, which is your finding your project. So set yourself some deadlines for that module if you need to, but just be aware if that is how you work. 
Has anyone here heard of the, the Pomodoro technique? So Pomodoro timer looks like this. Um, but the, the Pomodoro technique is, is a trick where you basically, it's a way of staying focused. So if you, if you tend to wander off task, um, then you, know, you can basically set yourself a timer for 25 minutes. Uh, you work on your task until the timer goes off. So you like do a solid 25 minutes of work. You basically shut off all your outside distractions for 25 minutes. I'm working on this task. And then when that timer goes off, you take a five minute break. And then you come back and you set the timer again and start again. And if you manage to work through that whole 25 minutes, then you tick that off as being a successful work session. And you can say, oh, I've spent 25 minutes on it. If you didn't get through that whole 25 minutes, then you, you would basically not record that as being a successful Pomodoro. So it's a way of basically keeping yourself focused in short bursts of productivity. Um, I, um, I know people um, close to me have used this technique uh, and found it very effective for themselves. Personally, I, I, um, I haven't actually found it super useful myself, but I know enough people that have that I think it's worth mentioning to you guys. So if you feel like that would help you, there are loads of apps available on various app stores like Google Play Store, and you can um, try these apps. Some of them will track the time for you, so it'll basically ask you at the end of the Pomodoro whether or not to record it as a successfully completed session, and then you can actually track how, many, how much time you spend on each of your projects. So you might say, I'm going to do a Pomodoro on my final year project. Start the timer. End of 25 minutes, timer goes off. Go get yourself a coffee. Um, Maybe not at the end of every Pomodoro, but you know, um, every other one. And then, um, and then, and then do it again. And then you can you'll be able to see on the app or whatever, like how much time you spent on each of those projects, and um, that can be quite helpful. So you will also tend to spend time spend your time based on the things that are here and now, rather than what your higher priorities are. So. You will be doing the things that are you'll basically you'll be firefighting a lot, of, a lot of the time. Something will come up, and you will respond to that and spend your time on it. Um, and you know there will be certain things that come up that you do need to drop everything for, but a lot of the time you don't need to. You might feel like you do, but if it's going to take you more than two minutes, um, it might not be the best thing to drop what you're doing and to switch tasks. So. Next tip, divide your time based on your priorities and obligations. So for you guys, you've got three modules you're working on this semester. You've got a certain number of days in the week. How many days of those week of each week should you be allocating to each of those modules? If you are working, say hypothetically, a, um, a six day working week, hypothetically, that would be two days per module plus a rest day. Um, if you are spending more than two days on a specific module, then you need to be careful that your other modules aren't slipping away and not getting the attention that they require. So, you know, think about that. And also just in general, think about your own priorities in life and like make sure that you're spending your time on the things that are where, you know, actually getting you closer to, you, to your goals, basically. Um, but yeah, that sounds a bit airy fairy, but no. You are easily distracted. Um, so tip, protect your time. Um, protect your time by isolation. You don't have 100% control of your environment, especially if you're sharing a house with other students. Um, there'll be various things that are happening around you that will all be in inputs into your what you're doing, and obviously you need to respond to them and you know act appropriately and everything. Um, but you do have some control over the what's coming into your life. And think about what inputs are you accepting. So while you're working, do you have Facebook open? How often are you switching to Facebook while you're working on your work? Do you have like other instant messaging software open? Do you have like news feeds that like basically alert you and distract you from what you're doing? Do you have um, email open while you're working? Uh, what I'm not saying is that you need to shut all of it, but just think about what you are seeing and what is actually happening. Um, 
how many news feeds are you um, basically subscribed to? And uh, you know, you will have heard me in the past really say how important it is to to st stay in contact with the news, especially around the security industry and the news that comes up. And what I'm not saying is don't read the news, but what I am saying is do it in moderation. Have some time in the morning or the evening where you catch up on the news, um, rather than it being like a constant thing. And then there's there's like an endorphin rush in your brain when you. Um, so, so scientifically, when if there's something that has random reinforcement, it's the strongest pull in your brain. So something like Facebook, for example, and and I don't use Facebook much, but you know what, something like that, or Reddit, if that's your thing. A lot of the time, you'll find nothing, and you switch to it, and it'll just be like no, 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 no. Every now and then, something will be oh, that's quite interesting or exciting, or you know that's quite, but because of those moments. You'll just constantly be drawn in to like access it and see, or maybe it'll be one of those moments or something like will be really exciting. So just just be aware of that. Um, and so are these actually critical of what you're trying to achieve? And how often do you need to check them? And just think about it, reflect on it. How if you don't if you don't need to have Facebook open all the time, you know maybe just open it at the end of the day and just check what's happened and reply to things rather than have it open constantly. Um, and learn to say no to people. When people ask you to do um, things, you can't say yes all of the time. You know, like if you've got other obligations, if you're tracking all the stuff that you need to be able to do to keep all of your commitments um, like moving, then at some point you're gonna have to start saying no to people. And um, you know, it can be a difficult thing to do because saying yes is also important when when you can to, to, uh, to help people out or to basically be doing stuff that you're interested in and things that are good for you. But you can't do everything that's interesting. You can't do everything that's good for you. You can't do everything for everyone that you know. Um, so you need to be able to balance that out. So GTD. Um, so this is where, um, so GTD, getting things done, is basically a cult. <laughs> um, it's it's a it's a productivity cult, I guess. Um, so it's it's based on this book. There's a new edition this year. So if you wanted to go and read it, um, I have been following the the getting things done methodology for about just over maybe uh, three quarters of a year or something now. And um, I think that I can suggest that it's got lots of helpful things. But again. Um, you know, just I'll explain what it is basically, and you can um, basically decide whether you want to take any of these tips on board. Most of the stuff that I've already said in the lecture so far are all things that are explicitly said as part of the, the G2D methodology. So basically, it's just a set, a step, a set of steps for making things flow in your workflow. So. Um, it's a system for collecting and tracking all your tasks, ideas, and projects. Uh, it's designed to stop you from worrying about all the things you could or should be doing. So it's basically, it's just, it's just a, um, a basic workflow. It's pretty simple at its core. Um, it's just a way of managing all your obligations. Um, essentially, it's like saying you should write lists for everything and um, keep them up to date. Basically, is what G2D is. So. Basically, the main idea of it is don't try and keep anything in your head, like other than knowledge, basically. So you know stuff, and that's what your brain's good at, but you're not good at all these other things. You're not good at like remembering a list of things. You're not good at remembering the dates of things. So don't try. Basically, you should be using an external system to track all that stuff for you. So the idea is like um, um, that you, you're, you're not overreacting to things. So one of the ideas is to have an inbox. So, and that can literally be a piece of paper that you keep on you, or you can use an app, a list writing app or whatever. And whenever something comes up, you think of something that needs doing or that you could do, you write it down, simple as that. So when you're doing that thing where you're on your way walking somewhere and you go, oh, I need to remember to do this, you just write it down. Stop thinking of, you know, rather than running over and over and over your head, just write it down and you can move on. Um, and 
you basically have this inbox where you just dump all these ideas and, and like obligations. Or if you say you're going to do something for someone else, you put it in your inbox and you can come back to that um, a couple of times a week and like process that list. So this is what the workflow looks like, right? So you have your, um, so the, this is just a picture someone's done on the interwebs. Um, the, so <clears throat> some, the picture in the book is much nicer, but for copyright reasons, I haven't included it in the slides. But if you um, you receive an email, you're talking to someone, you've got an idea, whatever, you write something into your in list, and then once a day or once a, you know every so often, you look at that list of things. You think, is this actionable? Is this something I actually have to do? If not, you can either trash it or um, basically incubate it so something you can look at later, or put it. It's just like reference information. If it is actionable, you think, is this going to take me less than two minutes to do? If the answer is yes, you just do it. Done. If it takes more than two minutes. If there's more than two actions, you put it on a project list. If not, then you can, um, if it's going to take more than two minutes and it's just like one step, you, you basically put it on a next action list or in your calendar to say, okay, this is a put it, keep it as a list of things that I need to do or put it in my calendar as something to do later. Or basically delegate it to someone else and say, actually, this is better if someone else can do it. Um, so then you ask someone else to do it and you keep a list of people that are doing things for you so that you can basically check up on them every now and then to see whether or not you need to follow up. That's it. That, I mean, that's the system. So it's like, it's not that complicated. Um, and it's almost common sense, right? You do half of this anyway, but it's just basically the idea of writing it down. It's, so... The, every, for every task that you have, you, you think about what's your outcome, what are you trying to do, and what's the next action, what's the actual next thing you need to do to get there. So the, the next physical step might be sending an email, it might be like setting up so, you know, some digital thing or whatever. Um, so you, you have a, a list of next actions basically, a list of the things that you need to do for each project. So for your finding your project, What's the very next physical thing that you need to do to make progress on that? You know, and or for the the each of the things that you're working on. So the other idea is that you can organize things based on the context that you're in. So you can have like a list of things you can do at a computer versus things you can do at a telephone. To be honest, it's not that useful because um, you can do almost everything at a at any computer nowadays. Like I can basically do a lot from, from my phone because it's like basically a website, like an input device. So, you know, they're, they're, but, the, but also setting reminders and things. But the idea being that you are reminded of something when you need to know it so that you're not constantly running through those things. But, you know, you set yourself a reminder so that when you're at the shops, it tells you the things you need to know at the shops. That's gonna be easy. Uh, that can be as, sim as simple as just having a shopping list, right? Same thing. Um, or having basically a list of the things, just basically just organize things so that when you need them, it's there. Um, and also the, the hardest part of the whole system is weekly reviews. Like, I mean, for me, just like making the time to do it is the hardest part of it. But basically once a week or actually ends up being once a fortnight or so, you actually spend a few hours and actually make sure, sure all the lists are up to date. So you go through, make sure any tasks that you've actually completed have been checked off, make sure any new tasks have been added to the system um, and set reminders and dates and things and process your inboxes down to zero. So you get all of everything cleared out, including replying to emails and things. Um, and then you can reflect on where you're going versus like your, your aim versus your trajectory. So is all this stuff that you've been working on actually taking you towards where you want to be. And if not, then maybe you need to reconsider like how you're spending your time. Uh, and the idea is to have like these areas of focus. So they're like your high level goals, medium and long term goals. And then every now and then you look at them and think about whether or not what you're doing lines up to that. So that's basically GTD um, in a nutshell. And um, I guess I'm not trying to um, you know, I've got no affiliation, obviously, or anything. I just, I, I think that it, there's some really useful stuff. So I think it's worth thinking about which of those tips you can take on board. And if it's, even if it's only the two minute rule,
then I think you walk away having something that is going to help you in your life. It's just like just to help you get things done. So um, personally, I do things a little bit, I, I deviate from a little bit. So I have, um, I use my calendar um, to basically assign all my tasks that I'm going to do for in a certain week. I assign them to a Monday and then I push things back through the week until they're done. <laughs> um, that is not necessarily the way that that is generally recommended, but I find it works for me. Um, but it gives me a daily task list basically. So each day I just look and I can see a list of all the things I need to do. At the end of the day, if I haven't done them, I push them to the next day. Um, and if it becomes urgent, I prioritize, basically flag it as being an urgent thing so that it gets done sooner. Um, I think um, the the software that you can use, how are we going for time? I think I might actually show you my list software. Um, but because it's basically my brain, I might um, just try to show you certain parts of it. Um, so, but, but what I would suggest is, is try out some software. So Todoist is, is the software that I use for, for list management. It, there's versions for almost every platform. Um, so there's iOS, Android, um, like Windows. You can get it working in Linux. Um, there's, there's a web interface, which is very good. If you're an Apple user and you entirely use Apple, OmniFocus apparently is very good for managing, managing these things. And there's lots of, there's like literally hundreds of, of different um, software that you can use. Um, I think what I'll do, if you want to have a look at um, my brain, um, I'll just pause. <laughs> All right. So just to, to so this is to do a strat. This is, this, this is my inbox. So when I think of something that comes up, um, I will add it to this inbox. So one of these is actually for Tom Shaw, that's you, to discuss um, the, the way that VMs are named on your project. Um, so I'll talk to you about that later. There's um, something about checking some, some dates against calendar. So the things that have come up just in the last like couple, like the end of yesterday and today that I haven't processed yet. Um, and then if you look, I, it gives me a nice list of today so I can see, um, you know what I need to do today, so I um, reminds me to go home. Um, <laughs> the uh, yeah, cleaning dishes um, and the mess from the baby. Um, the so doing some marking for, for this module, um, and then there's stuff to do with the project and sending some emails and things. So, but basically, when I'm sat at my computer, I'll have this list open and I can like work through it. Also, separate to this, I track emails that I need to action that are basically, because you know, in, in most email programs, you can star, like flag um, emails as requiring responses. So that's kind of separate to this as well, uh, unless it's like going to require multiple steps, in which case I'll put it in here as well. There is, um, I, it is, there are plugins so that you can import stuff from your emails into Todoist. But it's a bit clunky, to be honest. Um, so then you can look at it for the, for seven days. But also, if you look, I've kind of like organized by project. So hierarchically, there are um, projects, and each of those have tasks in them. So you can see what I've got. I've agreed to give another um, presentation at a conference, and I've got a few. Ta I've got six tasks in there. Um, semester one preparations. Um, there's like each week. Uh, updating lecture slides with, with new content. So it just reminds me what I need to look at for that. I've got a separate list of things that I've thought of that I want to add to lectures, but I'll just like refer to that when I'm updating that lecture, look in that list and see if anything applies to the lecture that I'm giving. Um, meeting agendas. So stuff that I want to say the next time I see someone. Um, so I might have like I had a school um, and then the things that I need to talk to him about so that rather than just going to him each time I need to have any question for him, I'll have a few things listed and then when I see him, I can kind of not waste his time and ask him a few questions. Um, some emails um, that I need to write that aren't responding to another email but something new. Um, finding someone to teach security modules. Um, the, that's going quite well actually. Um, you'll be happy to hear. Uh, there's your project thing here. 
Um, and then there's stuff to do with, um, there's a thing telling me to check the Facebook page for the, um, for the module, for this, for, for you guys. So once a week I log in and look at the Facebook page, see what's happened. I used to leave it open all the time, but that was too distracting. So once a week I, I check that. Um, it tells me when to check it. So I don't have to like constantly, oh, when was the last time I checked the Facebook thing? Um, anyway, various things. So you can see there's quite a few, 95 tasks to do with updating contents and some ideas to add to lectures and things. And then there's the various research projects and they're broken down into other things. Uh, you can see some of my programming projects. Um, so you can see, um, I don't know, so you can see here, for example, the tasks involved in um, this the slide thing. So, um, you know, adding code, adding something so that it can detect when the source code in the slides to format it automatically is something that I will do if I have time. Um, and, you know, there's a, there's a few other things. Um, so yeah, so for each of my projects, you can see that for my, my everything happening at home is also tracked. So I've got, um, I wasn't going to show you that. Uh, so I've got personal projects that involves like music projects, which I can add to the list of things that I've done in the last 12 months as I've almost finished recording an album of music. Um, and so like there's the creative things I do as well. And then there's like all home maintenance stuff and housekeeping and um, rem remembering to buy gifts for people before it's their birthday. Um, and so that you, it actually turns up before on time. Um, there's um, the cleaning that needs to happen and all that sort of stuff. Uh, finances. Um, there is um, project ideas. So just ideas that are like, well, one day and I can check that every now and then. And then once a week, I do a weekly review, which is this, and I look down this list. And a part of that is closing all the tabs that I had open on um, all my web browsers, because I have a habit of basically leaving all my tabs open. So I end up with like, by the end of the week, I've got like 100 tabs open. So I go through and like, I only these relevant, if not I close them or bookmark them or put them as actions or whatever. Um, so you like basically collect your notes, process your inbox to empty, um, see whether there are new projects or actions to add to this list. And then um, see if you want to add any new um, things to it. Look at the calendar, what's coming up in the week coming, add, add items there, and then see whether or not there are new things that you want to add to the list based on other ideas. And I've got some references and things. I've got a shared inbox for assigning tasks to my wife. <laughs> um, so, so um, yeah, I mean, that's just one like I guess fairly extreme way that you can use lift management software to, to manage things and um, even if you only use it to manage one project rather than everything in your entire life it could still be helpful I guess it could be uh, quite fun to see how many tasks so there's 444 tasks but in the office and um, I've got 64 tasks in uh, to do with program projects and 290 for at home um, so <laughs> yeah, so what you could do if you wanted to like, think about doing something to organize yourself is just start by just writing a list of all of the thing, all of the obligations and things that you currently have to do, walk around your house, think about what are all the things that actually need doing in your house, um, and then, um, start organizing it all and start processing it. Don't be too alarmed if you find out you've got hundreds of things that you're currently tracking in your brain. So once you put them onto uh, a system, it seem it might seem like a lot, but actually it's quite normal. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff happening in your life, um, and um, yeah, to do it, I, I really like um, that you can get away with the, using the free um, version for doing almost everything. If you want some of the more advanced features which um, probably you don't actually need that much, but um, I think it's only costs, it's not, it's not expensive. Does it have an integrated calendar? Uh, yeah, so it, um, where are my slides? Um, it does, it has, um, so that, that weekly stuff comes through to my calendar as well. So you, you can um, import it as a calendar. And so, um, yeah, so it does show up 
on my calendar it in includes the stuff from Todoist and it, as a separate calendar so you can color code it differently because it's handy to keep them separate a little bit. You can import your calendar into Todoist, which I also do, so that each of the things I need to do appear on my Todoist list because then you get the satisfaction of ticking them off each time you've been to a meeting or something. Um, and um, it has a bunch of other features that I've never used. Like you can forward emails into it to into projects to create lists. So in your email client, you can like forward an email to a specific email address for to do us, and it will automatically add to the list. And you can do, yeah, there's quite a lot that you can do with it. But even if you just use it to manage one project, it's good just as a way of um, you know tracking things. Drink coffee is my next tip. Um, there's something that, that has become quite popular recently, which is known as coffee naps, which is where you drink a cup of coffee, have a nap, and then wake up and do some work because the caffeine hits it, kicks in. But um, I, I had actually tried it, but I thought it was quite funny. Um, I'm not suggesting that you become like you drink like a cup of coffee every every 25 minutes, but you know, it's nice. Yeah, some of us do. Um, remember, you need some sleep as well. So um, so yeah. An activity for you guys, install a to-do list, some to-do list software, or just grab a notebook. Try and um, actually list the projects you're working on and write down all the things that you need to do. And make sure each of the things you write down are actually next actions, like things that you can actually action, actionable things. Um, so yeah, you, you can then like process your inbox, um, decide how you're going to allocate your time to your commitments. So don't get don't go down the rabbit hole of just like focusing on this one module, for example, which I think has happened a little bit. Um, and make sure you're also working on your final year projects because it's just as important, if not more. Um, and you know, when you're working, use your lists, and they become useless if you don't keep them up to date. But just tick things off as you're doing them, and it can keep you focused because it's like once you finish doing a task, rather than spending time thinking about what you need to do next, you just look at your list and choose something off your list to work on. So in conclusion, you have a monkey brain. <laughs> and uh, use external systems. So um, thanks, guys. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you again next week. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you.